Insights C-Suite Conversation Show. Now, today we feature Zulik Pharma, a leader in healthcare in the Asia Pacific region, dedicated to enhancing accessibility to healthcare within the communities that it caters to. Now, to tell us more about this very long and illustrious company, we have Giuseppe Leo, the Senior Vice President Clinical Reach at Zulik Pharma. Now, Giuseppe, on that note, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon. Now, Giuseppe, could you give us an overview of Zulik Pharma, its history, and your role within the company? Well, yeah, it's um, it's a long history. We've just um, we've just celebrated um, 100 years last year, uh, so uh, as you can imagine, um, Zulik Pharma is a leading healthcare solutions uh, company in Asia. We are uh, we were predominantly a, a distribution company that was our core business for many many years, um, but over the last um, ten plus years, fifteen years, we've uh, evolved many other services, including clinical reach, which is my uh, business unit, but also commercialization, data, and digital. So. I believe Zulik Pharma is very much at the heart of a lot of healthcare activities, dealing with a number of stakeholders um, and ultimately trying to improve the way things work for, um, for patients. Okay, now I want to zoom in then on the business that you're responsible for, Clinical Reach. Tell us about that. That's a relatively new business and how you have supported over 5,500 clinical trials so far. Well, Clinical Reach, I um, founded Clinical Reach about 16 years ago, um, but Zulik Pharma has been involved with, with clinical trial activity um, for a number of years before that. And uh, as part of my role, I identified that um, we were supporting our clients, but they were doing uh, a lot of activities for themselves. And what we saw was an opportunity for us to use um, very... Um, clear skills and capabilities that we have as an organization to um, uh, provide additional services and, and develop our capabilities in this space. So over the years, we um, realized that our presence in Asia was one of our key advantages. And we have 16 depots um, across the world now. That includes uh, the USA and Europe, but predominantly in Asia, um, whereby we cover all the countries that have clinical trial activities, including countries such as Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, um, apart from the uh, more prominent countries such as China, Japan, India, and Australia, which are which are very um, you know busy countries when it comes to clinical trial activity. Now, and and just for the to give our audience context. Clinical trials are so important, especially in, in the Asia Pacific now, because of the fact that medicine has become less generic, much more targeted. And these clinical trials really help to, to achieve better outcomes from pharmaceutical and, and treatments and so forth. Could you give us a sense then, Giuseppe, on on how this this growth of this industry has taken place, say, over the last 16 years? You know, I think the industry has been growing uh, phenomenally. Uh, it's obviously a very important element of um, drug development. Uh, it's, um, it's a ne necessary process to ensure the um, safety, first and foremost, and, and, and then the efficacy of the products that are being, uh, being launched. Asia Pacific has come more in prominence over these past um, 20 years, um, whereby clearly the patient populations, the demographics of Asia is, is hugely attractive to pharmaceutical companies. And, um, and, and the lower cost of doing uh, trial, clinical trials in Asia, partly because of the um, availability of, of patients, um, but also because of the... Um, lower cost that we are we find in in most asian uh, markets so there's been a big shift and um, asia pacific has been one of the fastest growing regions now easily more than 10 years uh, in the industry um i think what we're seeing now though is is a bit of a change in that it's not only 
um, pharmaceutical companies in the USA and uh, Europe that are conducting studies in Asia, but it's now also Asian companies, um, predominantly biotech companies from Asia that are also conducting trials in Asia and now starting to move their trials globally also. So how is that then shifting the landscape? Because, uh, and you've just alluded to this, so it's now earmarked the emergence of Asian biotech and Asian pharmaceutical companies, whereas in the past, they were generally from the US or Europe. Um, how has that changed the dynamics and how has that changed the competitive landscape as well? Yeah, it's, it's a very it's a very complex environment because of that. You've still got the uh, traditional big pharmaceutical and new emerging biotechs from the West um, that are also growing. And, um, and they're also growing in this region because the region itself is increasing in, in importance. Um, the uh, prevalence of, of new diseases and um, uh, conditions that are emerging here means that this isn't just an area to uh, test your drugs, but it's also an important area uh, for treatment, for, for, for the capture of patients. And then you have um, the, the emergence of Asian companies, predominantly in, in North of Asia. So China, Korea, Japan, um, India has obviously always been uh, a pharmaceutical hotbed. Um, so these companies are, are conducting trials domestically within their own markets for, for those markets themselves the, across the region and more and more now moving to, uh, to the USA and Europe to test their products there, to launch their products globally. So, of course, from my perspective, um, <clears throat> clearly there's more competition in the development of drugs, but from my, com my perspective, it means that there are more companies conducting trials and more opportunities for us to provide our services to a, to a broader base of, of pharmaceutical and biotech clients. And, and I can see this then uh, playing out and, and, the, and correct me around the value proposition of, of your business unit. So I could be a, a, a relatively small manufacturer in mm -hmm. Japan that really wants to have a bigger reach outside of Japan. I've got a proven track record, proven product, but I need more trials in different regions in order then to get the necessary data to sell in those markets. And then I go to somebody like you, is that correct? Very much so. And, and I think we, we are really the, um, the opposite of, of most other global companies in this space. We're the company that has uh, started its, its base is Asia and moving globally, whereas uh, predominantly all our competitors are, are US, US or European companies that are moving into Asia. <clears throat> so I think we like to see ourselves as um, a local Asian company that can also provide global services. And by being local um, to Asia, uh, as you well know, the, the variations within the, um, within the region, the, the, the geographic variations, the demographic differences between countries, um, even the healthcare infrastructure within each of the countries um, of Asia is so different. So having that understanding is really um, very much, um, you know, the, the spine of, of our business. The fact that we are present locally in all these markets and the fact that we understand and have people who not only speak the language, but really understand the industry in, in every market that we work in. So we can talk to not only our clients very well about what they need, but also to the client, the patients or the sites in which they conduct the trials. We can speak to those sites, which are often investigators or clinical research associates that, that conduct the trials there. We can speak to them in real time, local languages, and really understanding what their needs are and, and how to address those. And also, it's interestingly enough, Giuseppe, that you can actually take, and I, I'll build on my example of the, the small Japanese drug manufacturer that's been around. They work with Zulik Pharma. You do multiple uh, trials around the, the, the world, testing for efficacy and so forth. And then after that, they can go to Zulik Pharma and say, please distribute this product for me across the world. Yes, and, and that, is, that is really, I suppose, the long-term gain for us that over 
having built relationships with these companies, as in you know, your small Japanese biotech um, that we've been working with for many years to conduct the trials, we understand how they work. They also understand you know, how we work. We have a legal infrastructure in place. And, and now they want to progress that um, product commercial uh, commercialization. The nice thing is that the way Zulik Pharma has developed is that we have all of those capabilities, all the way from registration, marketing, launching of products, selling of products, and then physically distributing those products also, um, which is, is, I think, a very unique uh, position we find ourselves in. Could you perhaps, because you've been in the company for a long time, could you perhaps share some success stories, perhaps, of the example, perhaps a, a tangible example of, 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 of what we've been just discussing? Yeah, I think, uh, well, it's still early days for the Asian, um, uh, you know, research and development part of the business. And as you know, a drug can take... Um, up to 10 years in, in terms of development before it's even launched. So um, that part of the business, I think, is uh, is still emerging. But what we're seeing today um, in a number of areas is, particularly in places like Korea and China, um, are biotechs that we're working with um, in clinical trials. And of course, um, linking those two to our commercialization teams. Um, not necessarily... I'd love to say it's for a product that we've done the trial on and, and we're now launching it. Not, not yet. But they have other products that they have launched um, in the West and now looking at Asia as, as, their, as their launch market. Of course, every, every, every company wants to launch their products. If they have a good product, they're going to launch in the biggest markets first. That's where they can you know, uh, establish themselves uh, very, very quickly. So it's great. We have the opportunity now to talk to those companies and say, well, this portfolio you have, um, look at your Asian markets because we're ready and, and waiting to, um, to commercialize those products and distribute them on your behalf without the need to have to license them out. And if they did want to license them out, they could also license them to us um, if that was their, their preference. But we have a uh, very various models in which we can support those companies to bring those products through. So that is something that's it's really emerging now and and clearly something that we would like to continue to develop and, and take forward. Now Giuseppe, what are you seeing as as key trends within the clinical reach business uh, uh, in, in in the last two or three years? Yeah, I think key trends is um, is, is probably a, a difficult thing to uh, to pick out, uh, especially because of pre-COVID, COVID, and then post-COVID. There's been a lot of activity that has been related to what's happened around the pandemic. Um, but having said that, there are the uh, broader trends, definitely in terms of um, the research that's going on. Um, the pandemic itself brought out uh, mRNA vaccines. Um, um, biotech emerging um, has been a really big trend over the last uh, 10 years. Um, and now we're seeing cell and gene therapies, um, uh, regenerative medicine that is uh, very tailored and, uh, and specific to patients. So what we're also seeing, apart from the research, and, and it's slightly linked to the research, but it's also the complexity of how trials are structured. Because um, the treatments are no longer uh, very basic as they were before, you know, a tablet that someone would take and, and then monitor the symptoms, um, the, the, the studies also need to adapt. And, and they're adapting as they're in progress, uh, which means that things need to change. And, and I believe this is, again, an area where we come really can can put our best foot forward to show that we are very agile in in terms of supporting a client when things change um, when they need to do something different um, so that's a, I think a very big part of of the development of the industry it's becoming more complex it's becoming more agile and there is a need to adapt as things develop so that you're able to get the best possible outcomes for every study. Now, looking ahead for 
Zulik Farmers Clinical Reach Business, what are you looking uh, uh, to achieve? What are your key goals for 2024? Well, as always, to meet my budget, um, uh, that's, uh, that's always a key goal for us. Um, no, but I think that's the same for every company. Um, really, it's um, the um, further development of, of our business. Um, there are a lot of things happening. Another very key area that's happening with the cell and gene, for example, is, is temperature control. The, the range of temperatures um, for storage and, and movement of products is, is actually expanding. So now we're going from, um, you know, cold chain, which is, is a very common term, you know, maintaining the temperature, very precise temperatures, well, actually to warm chain, where even at warmer temperatures, it, it's very precise how cells need to be maintained. So building that infrastructure to be able to go from 36 degrees at a very controlled level, all the way to minus 180 degrees, um, it, it's quite a challenge, and and that means that there we you know, we need to be able to provide those services across uh, all our our network. So building that infrastructure is very very important. Having that infrastructure locally, I think, gives us a huge advantage because it eliminates a massive amount of risk rather than transporting things internationally all the time. So this is uh, really important. So we're developing um, our infrastructure to really have um, the best in class capabilities across Asia Pacific, where all our depots are. And furthermore, we're developing our infrastructure in the USA and Europe, so as to be able to support, as you mentioned, that small Japanese biotech, when they want to go to the USA and Europe, that we can support them all the way through to all of those capabilities. So I think it's been a fascinating conversation. It was really good to understand your business in a, in a lot more detail and, and the value that you bring uh, to the region. But before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with? I think a key area is obviously technology and, and to be on your show and not talk about technology would uh, would be a sin. I'm sure you wouldn't forgive me. Um, but um, so so I think technology is, uh, is key for us. Um, one of our, our core business units now is our, is our data and digital team that has developed a number of uh, very cutting edge initiatives. And we're trying to inco you know, inculcate those into our business. So we have a proprietary system that manages our clinical trials um, so that we can, right from the beginning of setting up the, the operations uh, with our clients, where we capture all the information about the trial, we can, we can embed that in our systems so that they're available to our teams to, to use as we as we progress through the trial. Um, we have a great um, blockchain technology that, that tracks um, um, drugs all the way through. Um, so they don't, it isn't a matter of just, you know, track and trace for movement, but it's really about tracking the integrity of a product from, from end to end. I think, um, if I was going to leave you with one thing, I think that is a very important part of our development, the technology that we're putting behind our capabilities and, uh, and, and our ability to, to deliver on that. And Giuseppe, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. Thank you, Brian. Much appreciated and very enjoyable. Thank you. Now, we've been speaking to Giuseppe Leo. He's a Senior Vice President, Clinical Reach at Zulik Pharma. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to Bistec C-Suite Conversation Show. This interview will be on our website, www.bistec.asia, as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.